Hi folks, we got the 2001 Nissan. 2001 in New York. This is wild. 126, 571. Lady says the brake light and the battery light came on. And we can see that's the case. If I take the parking brake and flick it up and down here, we can see that intensity of the light changes, but the battery light stays on. Uh, now she dropped this off last night right about quitting time. I was only able at that point to verify that it was not charging and I can show you. So I put the charger on it uh, yesterday before I went home, left it on semi-nuclear, so the two amp setting, let it charge up fully so we could do some proper testing this morning. And we can see we are at 12.74 volts DC. So let me go ahead and fire it up, make sure it is still not charging. And we can, uh, hopefully you guys can see that that's the case here, 12 point whatever it's at, 12.27. We're definitely not charging. And I went ahead and grabbed us a wiring diagram. It looks like a pretty simple alternator system. So let's have a look at that. Of course, it's always our initial shotgun approach, our gut feeling like, hey, it needs an alternator. Put an alternator on it. But how embarrassing would it be to put one on and then have to make the call to your customer and say, hey, I was wrong, you need more money. So we're gonna avoid that phone call and we're gonna do a couple quick checks. So, let's see. Get that unplugged, looks like she is she a double plugger? Nope, she's a single plugger, but that wiring harness goes down to the air conditioner. So we're gonna have to make our checks right here. So according to our wiring diagram, it must be internally regulated. So we've got our big 100 amper. So this is the big, the big hockey wire right there. And then it grounds through the generator case. And then it appears, must be a fusible link there. And then we have a green with black wire that runs to it. it must be the Gen Sense wire, because it goes to the S terminal. And that just runs off a uh, fuse that appears to be full time powered. And then we have the one that runs through the charging lamp circuit, which we don't even have to touch that one on the L circuit uh, because we know it works because the charging lamp's on, but we can, uh, you know, quick like a bunny do that. Let me turn the key on, folks. Okay, so we're gonna be looking for our green with black. That's gonna be coming from a fuse, a 10 amp fuse, so we'll gingerly front probe that and we'll go on the ground and we can see that we're pulling some big current through that lead. That's a four amp test light. Now the other way for the light circuit, well, I guess we could prove it. Let's go see the light should be out technically. And the light is out. So it's right next to that service engine soon light. So if we ground that circuit, the light should come on. We can use a low amp test light here. Excuse me, boys. Let's make sure our test light works. It may even light this test light. It may or may not. Oh, and it does. Okay, so this, this test light, it actually lights because it pulls less current than the bulb that's in there. But we know that this circuit's intact simply because the charging light goes out with the unplugged and it comes on with it plugged in. Now, there's always the question of, you know, we've got to do a voltage drop test from here to the positive battery and then from the negative battery to the alternator case. But you can't because it's not charging and you can only voltage drop circuits that have current flow. So I'll show you a little trick Mima taught me. Every shop in America's got one of these piles sitting around. <laughs> Get it? Pile, carbon, carbon pile, no, not, not a good joke. Uh, make sure she's turned off all the way if one of the other ding-dongs in the shop used it last. And then we can simply test the actual alternator. We're gonna hook this right on the alternator case, negative. And then we're going to take this one and we're going to hook it on the alternator positive. Okay. Watch your amp meter. Now this is protected by a fuse or a fuse link, 100 amps. So then we're going to take, uh, hold on, stand by. Sorry about that. Make sure you got a good connection there. And as I was just saying, this is protected by a 100 amp fuse or sometimes a fusible link. So don't go too crazy, but let's put like 50 amps on this little fella. And that's gonna, we don't have to do a voltage drop test because if we can pull, if we can pull some big current through this baby, then we know the circuit's intact. 
got to go careful because the old carbon pile will put it right to it. Right. There's 50 amps. There's about 75, and I'm going to back back off because I'm sure I can go to the point it blows the fuse. But that tells me our ground integrity is good. It tells me the power wire from the battery to the alternator is good. Everything's good. The alternator's junk. Whether it's you know the internal regulator or whatever the case may be, I don't care because we don't rebuild them. We replace them. So now I can confidently say the entire circuit is good. The engine block ground is good. The wire uh, coming from the battery uh, to the output of the alternator is good. It has the ability to carry at least 75 amps. So there's no more question. We know the belt's on and not slipping. What else can it be, baby? Okay, we got approval from this lady. Let's give her a call. I did locate an alternator. Uh, not from Napa, uh, believe it or not. They didn't have one, which is not a big surprise. This is a 2001. Unheard of in the PRNY. We're gonna hook the battery negative. We'll get some tools. Looks like a piece of cake. We'll get after it. Let's see, what do we need? Looks like a 12 mil. Probably a 13-ish there. We gotta back the belt tension off. Looks like she probably should resolve some of these oil leaks too. Let's get some tools. Yeah, she's a 12 there. There's a manual tensioner on this system here. Kind of old school. That's a pulley right down here, right by the alternator. And that should be a 12 also. Let's see, maybe it's a 14. Yeah, it must be 14 because 12 doesn't fit. However, it fits there. And it should fit here also. Obviously, make sure you take the uh, battery loose. I'm not really worried about breaking the top of this alternator because we've got the new one, so that little plastic below it, that's all cracked out now. It's all cracked out. Let's see. I'll spin it off. Uh, make sure your battery's unhooked if it isn't. You get a little spark show if you don't. Possibly blow a fuse that can be difficult to get or, or something else. Uh, what was I going to say? Fusible link, which is a pain to change. Pain is just. Just try to avoid it. Let's see, I'm gonna get a pair. I wanna unplug that uh, AC compressor down there, folks. I'm just gonna reach down there with a pick and push. Depress the uh, tab on it there if I can. If I can get to it. Where in the thunder is it down there? Push it and pull the connector out at the same time, that would be great. Ah, negative, positive. There we go. This this way here, we can get this harness up. So this plugs into the AC. I was just reaching on there with a pick and pushing on the release tab. I'm gonna grab a 14 mil here. I'm gonna go right down to that pulley here. See if that is. That is a 14 mil. Oh, baby. We're just gonna crack this loose. And then I think it's probably like an eight millimeter or a 10 millimeter that we're gonna need to back it back off. Okay, so there's that. So that's a 14 and it does look like, I'll have to show you where that is. Let me get a, must be a 10 mil. Let me get a 10 mil. Just show you where I'm gonna go here, folks. It's actually eight millimeter, and it's that little stud that sticks out right there. And then the pulley I took loose is this pulley right there. <laughs> Not the alternator pulley. Let me point to it, because in case you're wondering, it's this pulley right here. So take the nut loose on the front of that. You just gotta crack it loose. You don't have to take it all the way off. And then this down here, if I can get my finger pointing to it, is the stud that we're gonna be backing off with our eight mil. It should be as simple as that. Once we start backing this off, it's probably going to get kind of loose. We might even be able to spin it with our fingers, and that's going to back that pulley off. Loosen up our belt tension here for us. All right, not the most convenient thing to record here for you, so I'm trying to show you. I'm trying, folks. Looks like the original alternator, too, huh? Or at least if it's been replaced, it was replaced with a Nissan one. A little slippery down here. 
So we'll back this off just far enough to get the belt off. So I am able to do it with my fingers. Just barely. There we go. Put a little extension on it. Something that's not completely covered in grease. Okay, so we've got that backed off, I think, far enough to do what we need to do. Stick this somewhere so we won't lose it. Slip our belt off, just barely. Come on, baby, there she goes. We'll leave that lane right there. And then the bottom bolt on the alternator uh, is somewhere. We're gonna have to give it the classic reach around. It's down here. I don't know what size it is. I'm gonna guess, we'll try a 14. We'll see if that's it. You just kinda gotta do that one by feel. Feels like it is, we're on, or at least we're on to something. Oh, you mother loving lover. Where is it now? Try this again. Get up on there, get your arm in a position so when you slip, you get a good cut. Nope, I don't like how that feels. It wants to come off, so we're gonna get both hands in there so we can really get injured. Nope, I don't like how that's doing. I'm gonna grab a six-pointed socket, uh, probably a 14 deep. Come out here and get a ratchet. Let's screw it 14 millimeter. Six points. Get a couple clicks on it. It's kind of nice working on a vehicle like this. It's A, it's southern, so it's not all rusty, and B, it's all oily, so most stuff's not seized up, which is really fantastic. Okay, so there's that bolt, uh, presumably the one that holds the alternator on. <laughs> Let's see, is she wiggly? Nope, it might not even be the alternator bolt, but it's a bolt from down below. We're going to take the upper one out here. And then I'm curious if it may be worthwhile just pulling the upper bracket off to give us a little more room, which I think we're going to take this off to get it out anyways. So we'll stick our 12 on there. We'll give her a yank. And then we'll just take this whole bracket off right up and out of our way. We'll set that to the side. Stick this bolt in it. We'll keep the nut that we got off our positive post there. Is she wiggly? Oh yeah, so we must have took the right bolt out the bottom. We don't want to break this. It looks like a coolant sensor here. So we're just going to unplug it, give us a little bit more room. And we're going to pull up and we're going to wiggle. Come on, mother freaking come on. You got to say some stuff like that. Come on, baby. She feels a little more tweet. Oh, she's a, is you a double bolt and son of a little, oh, I hate you, I hate you, Nisa. What the flip, I think it's got a bolt on the backside right up against the exhaust manifold. Awesome! Not really, now we gotta get a wrench. There's a bolt on the backside, which looks like it's a son of a bee to get to. 14 mm, let me go get a wrench. As tempting as it may be to get up in that joint with a, uh, a ratchet wrench, don't do it. Because you might back her out right up against the manifold. Um, hmm. Isn't that just lovely? How in the flip do we get in there? Do we have to, we don't have to pull the AC compressor to do this stupid thing, do we? I'm just sitting here singing the praises of working on an oldie. Now I'm mother effing the thing. Be an auto mechanic, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Okay, we're on the bolt. We're on it with a stubby. Of course, you've got no power. We've got no power. We've got the bar. We've got the BFH. We're going to go right on the end of the wrench. Make a little impact action. Don't you pop off that thing now. I will cut you with the torch. I'll come over here again a little bit. Oh, you son of a hoo-hoo. Get 
too stupid. Can we reach it with this? You can, but you've only got so many degrees of rotation with 12 point. Da da de do do, I hate my job today. Hey, hey! That's, uh, let's go underneath and have a look. Oh, look at that, we're on it. Oh, and it cracked loose. Oh, do do, I love my job today. We're gonna attempt it with the long shanky quarter inch drive in a 14 mil. Probably not enough room. Negative Ghost Rider. Oh, you mother friggin' bull. God, I hate my job. Let's see here. I'm gonna have to move ya. What are the odds now? We got it cracked loose. This is wicked convenient. Let's see if we can get up in here with a stubby. Get that back on it. I'm hoping if we crack it loose a little bit more, we can spin it out with our fingers. Oh, I still ain't got the power. What are you, pansy? Let's see. Come back in with the old bar routine. Okay, gosh, it's like a wuss bag. It'd be really nice if that thing was, uh, you know, like slotted or something. Let's see here. Well, see, it's coming loose, but. Give me a break, mister. Remember that thing I told you not to do? We're doing it. The non-reversible ratcheting stubby wrench. It's the only thing that makes sense. Going in full no mercy reversey. Could back it right against the manifold, in which case we're completely screwed. I just freaking dropped it. Gosh. Take two, I'm going in. No mercy <laughs> reverse. <laughs> This sucks, man. There's uh, I thought about looking at service data here. We're obviously skipping a, a step. Um, of course, there's not enough resistance on it, I think, to use the ratchet portion here. Barely. Come on, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna F bomb right on YouTube. Seriously, I am. We're going with the long ratchet wrench. And uh, as we proceed here, we're thankful for God's mercy and grace and forgiveness because when you're done getting this bolt out you're you're gonna need some just just for the record um, might have to pause the camera here again for another moment Hallelujah. Oh. Uh, I'm going to need my, my renewing of my mercies tomorrow morning. Greatest thy faithfulness there it is. Hallelujah. A baby is born. The other bad part about that good part is the fact that we got to put it back in. Free tip Friday for you. Stick the bolt back in before you slide her down. It's tight. She's tight to the cat. I know it's a lot of whining and crying, but I'm gonna go like that. Now, when you tighten this up, you're gonna have to give her a little bit of beans because here's the adjuster, so to speak. So this piece here takes up the slop in the bracket. This way here, there can be some discrepancies in the, in the bracket, the cast bracket down there. 
and also in the housing of the alternator so when we tighten this up you know it'll pull this metal piece in so too bad they didn't put that on the front side where the bolt's easy to get to but we're going to take leave the bolt kind of half wiggled out here and then we're going to very gingerly set her down on she goes just like so i'm going to stick the front bolt in because i think it'll help guide us if i can find it there she is so we're going to get that one started just to hold the alternator still because it's going to be a pain in a ho ho to do that back one. I do want to reach down here a little bit, slip that in a little closer. I'm giving it the old two finger tickler trying to get that bolt to start there. Might have to wiggle the alternator. I believe, I believe it's started. And then we're going to get after it with the ratchet wrench in this direction. Are you getting after? <laughs> this alternator. We were just... What happened here? What? That looks... Like what happened here? Got a little rough. <laughs> Things were happening. I turned off the camera. Leaving. Um, I explained the fact that you're going to have to really rely on God's mercy and grace and forgiveness when you get this alternator out. Because you're going to need a little. All right? Plus the camera. Had a little, uh, oh little square section. All right? Uh-oh. Looks yeah. like you got the new one in. Yeah, baby. Oh mm -hmm. uh, well, it's not. The hard part's not over. I just want to see if this is gonna hurt or hinder us here. It looks like it hurt already. Oh, this didn't hurt. This ain't nothing, girl. So let's uh, go like that. There. That's not gonna help us. We're gonna leave her wiggly like that. Uh, where's our ratchet wrench? We're gonna get after it with the 14 mil. I'm not gonna let you guys suffer through me with this one. I'm gonna take and talk to the very love. Do you need to talk to me, Mr. Bill? No. Oh, I just came out to see what's up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, just sitting here having some reflection. Mm-hmm. Just remember, some other mechanic has it harder than we do right now, okay? Yeah. That, that helps. You know what? You know, sometimes when I'm like, I hate my mother effing job. I go watch the Pakistani truck channel. <laughs> and let me tell you what, boys. If you haven't gone on the Pakistani truck channel, kudos to those folks over there. It's all about perspective. It is all about perspective, you know. I knew this, uh, I got this, I know this guy who, uh, he works out three times a week. He reads two, three books a month. Has sex three times a week. Yet every day he complains how bad prison is. Okay, so it's all about perspective, <laughs> all right? But when you watch the Pakistani truck channel, I tell you what, boys, it just blows my mind, uh, the stuff that they can accomplish. So when I worked with my old man, when he was alive, we used to stretch trucks like that and, you know, uh, you know do in frames and then we would, you know, double frame and, and stretch trucks and do truck bodies and outfitting and stuff like that. So I'm quite familiar with the process and the type of job it is, even having all the proper equipment, you know, massive metal brakes to make the frame rails, magnetic drill presses, everything. And then to watch what these guys do. With bare feet. Yeah, wearing <laughs> flip flops and what are the togas or whatever it is that they wear. The, you know, whatever they wear over there, the nightgowns or whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know what they're called, but they look like nightgowns. Nightgowns for dudes. It just blows my mind, man. I'm just like, but the nightgown thing, you actually, you actually might be a oh, little jealous of that. I am a little jealous of that. Let me tell you what, folks. So, there's this guy we see about every Sunday there. He wears coveralls. Uh, old guy. You know, like it's overalls. Overalls. Coveralls cover you. Overalls. Just cool. Yeah. Go over well, you. Well, you know what I'm saying. And I'm thinking like that's as close as a dude can come to wearing like. I'm, I'm gonna get you some like a dress type thing or like a kilt i guess i guess what i'm getting at is the overhauls look they look freaking comfy they are yep and they look amazing and i think i want to try some the overalls right overalls that we yeah. determine there i have they, some they're fleece they look like a whole other level of comfort they look amazing simply <laughs> because you don't need a belt and 
You don't need a shirt. You don't even need a shirt on underneath them. And I'm just thinking, like, man, I just gotta, you just gotta own it, I'm thinking, and just, just do it. You know what? If it doesn't matter what people say about you, and you're not worried about that, I'm thinking the overall is the next, the next best thing to comfort. It just, I don't know, maybe there's some overall wearers that watch our channel. But, what do you think, Miss, though? Uh, yeah. We could we could get two pairs and wear them around together. Of course, I'm I'm probably gonna wear a shirt with mine. Oh. But well, if you don't, we get the views. If you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that but, is on YouTube. You but you can it. go without the shirt. I'll go without a shirt. And we uh, can we could have matching overalls. We can. But wear, I'm thinking, I am you know over the hill now. We can start doing those old people things. Oh, right now that's matching, 40. Yeah, matching, matching, clothes. <laughs> matching sweatpants with like our dog head embroidered on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, no, you'd have to have your dog and then that. No, no. I, I remember my parents. Yeah, they got the parents they got the matching sweatpants <laughs> and the matching sweatshirt. We, my mom and dad did the little dog on it. Chrissy's a little yep, beagle, beagle they used to have. Yep. Yep. Oh Chrissy. Yep. <laughs> I wanna say my dad even had her name painted on the driver's door or on the passenger rear door or something on one of his trucks. Chrissy, I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I got a sad day when that dog dies. All right. I thought, yeah, because I remember it said like Sonny on the driver's side, Shirley on the passenger, and then like Chrissy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Who's Chrissy? Oh, that's your Oh, that's wife? our dog. Oh, that's my dog. Oh, you don't have any children? No, we do. We just didn't paint their name on the truck. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Appreciate it. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, so the overall. Put down in the comments, uh, folks, section, huh? I don't think I'm too afraid to wear the overalls. I mean, not, not really a thing of afraidness. It's just I've wore rustlers and a t-shirt and boots since I was about 13-ish. <laughs> what did you wear before you were 13 then? Yeah, I remember I went through a thing where I wore clam diggers for a while. What? The the Short. long shorts. You oh, know, the, long shorts. We always call them clam diggers. No, we always call them clam diggers. And then uh, during school there, uh, the MC Hammer, oh, yeah. when, when he came out. So I did some hammer pants for a little while, but they weren't me. My buddies did the hammer pants. I tried the hammer pants. I listened to the MC Hammer, the vanilla ice. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. You know, <laughs> that guy. And uh, I did all that stuff. And then I just went back <laughs> to listening to classic rock. Went back? In did 90, you listen to it before I did. I then? I listened to classic rock. Before you listened to MC Hammer, Hammer and yes. Ice Ice. Because I tried to fit in. Ice. I you tried listened to, to classic in. rock. I listened to classic rock in 90s country. Of course, it was the era of 90s country. And my mom was a big Randy Travis fan. Oh. So, which, you know, I listened to some of the songs that I remember me and mom listening to, and I'm just like, Mom, those aren't great songs. <laughs> like, yeah, they're catchy. Well, they're not great songs. Like, <laughs> so anyhow, so that's what I listen to. And that's kind of what I still listen to today. Randy Travis? Not, well, some Randy Travis. It's too bad with that fella, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, yeah. It just goes to show you can be as rich as you want and still be miserable AF. Yep. And be an alcoholic and everything else even though you think like you know what if i was only rich i'd have it all <laughs> i'd be happy but mm -hmm. yeah i can't buy you that but it can buy you a boat <laughs> a truck to pull it <laughs> it's like a kid's theme song <laughs> one of them yeah one of his theme songs he didn't even know what silver bullets were, but he knew that money could buy him when he bought his boat. <laughs> then we had to explain to him what silver bullets were. <laughs> and that only women drink that beer. But uh, he understands the song now. So anyhow, that's it. So So uh, in your next video, are you gonna be wearing some overalls? Overalls? I don't know, Finesse. I don't know. Because you're gonna get some funny looks because we're not farmers. <laughs> you just like the mechanic. Maybe the mechanic I, who wears overalls. That's, yeah, but you can start a new trend there. Oh, could be. I think you got to be like sexy though to like to be a guy, a shirtless guy with the coveralls. Because you're kind of like you can either be like have a real fat belly and a southern draw and wear them with no shirt, 
or you can be like super chiseled and wear them. And if I think if I wore them, you're just like that weird guy. You know what I'm saying? You're just like, oh, it's awkward. you're making this awkward. Does that make sense to you? I don't. Are you and listening to I'm me? kind of. I'm okay with awkward. Oh, okay. We'll, see. Really we'll take a vote. I might even put out a poll. Oh. Well, now you need approval. Just go for it. I would totally be wearing. I wear things that I'm comfortable in, and. I know you do it. I'm like, wow. How great would it be to be able to wear a dress <laughs> and not be judged? Still be a dude. Oh, but well, like, there's a lot of that going on. I know, but I'm just saying, still be like. Still be a guy. I think your overalls are as close as you're gonna get. Yeah, because I'm thinking like I Unless sleep. you go live in like another country where they normally wear them. Yeah, I kinda wanna go to Pakistan. Those guys look comfortable. But I see you wearing dresses and I'm like, man, that does look comfortable. Like just thinking. Cooler. Yeah, I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Not cool, like, hey, she's cool, like, hey, that's she doesn't look hot, like sweaty. Depends on the dress comfort wise though. I think I'd want a long one. Uh huh. A long, flowy one. Yeah, I don't think I'd be a mini skirt guy. <laughs> you know, because there's always that possibility of that whole thing going wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing you know, you're looking at your ding dong. Or everybody oh, that's else. Oh, thirteen is. mil. Stand by. Just you wait. I know. You definitely want to take that shirt off with your overalls on. No, but I wouldn't be able to keep you under control either. <laughs> Animal. <laughs> uh, I need a screwdriver. We have a screwdriver there, young lady, over there in the top right hand side. First set of small drawers. Uh, Phillips head about uh, maybe eight inch here. Or anything about eight inches long. Really, Phillips would be great though. Perfect. And I uh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> That's eight inches, huh? Good job on this call. <laughs> Appreciate that. Let's see here. Boom. Look at that. She's snugged up. That's on. The belt is on. We still need to set the belt tension, so I'm not going to tighten that pulley yet. But we're going to make sure it charges first. We'll let her run a second, then we're going to tighten the uh, belt appropriately. Would you be so kind as to fire this little guy up there, old girl? Uh, just un momento. I gotta snug that up. Now nah, we don't need to snug it up. You're good. I'll hold it. Pull. Ready? Yep. Ready. Right. Where are you? Can you see me? 14.3. Go ahead and shut her off there, young lady. Boom. So she's a charging. So now, one hook that so Mrs. O doesn't play a trick on us. Try to grind our fingers up. We're going to be using your classic belt tension and deflection gauge and we're going to do about 80 psi on a used belt. Let's hold her closely here, stick her down here and then we're going to give it, whoops, got to make sure these are kind of tricky to use in confined areas that are set up in the middle of the belt there. Push it till it clicks very gingerly, pull it up here, we're going to look and see where we're at. 50, 60, 70. Five, but almost 80. Let me just double check this again. Sometimes these you gotta do two, three times, make sure you get the same readings. There, we're just a whisker over 70. One more time for the, for the people. Let's see where we're at here. We are at 50, 60, 70, somewhere between 70 and 80. I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna leave it. So we got lucky on that one. And then what we'll do is I'm gonna reach down because this pulley might actually straighten up a little bit as I tighten it and actually add a little more tension. So I'm just gonna tighten that up. Then we can double check the deflection on the belt. Because you don't wanna just go by your gut. I mean, I suppose you can. But you definitely could shorten the bearing life of, well, everything on the serpentine belt. So now that that's snug, I'm going to get down here. We're going to get after it one more time. Make sure it gauges all the way down. Let it click. Pull her off nice and straight. 
and we are at, oops, must be I didn't flick it right. It's a little too high. <laughs> Not high like smoking the reefer high, just too high up on the belt. And there we're at 50, 60, 70 and a half, somewhere between 70 and 80. We're still good. I'm happy, you're happy. Customers calling, we should be good. Wow, that was a pain in the neck. So that's it folks, I'm gonna hook this up. We're gonna run the charging system through its paces. We're gonna test the battery, make sure it's okay, which I think it probably is. It took a charge fine, but we're gonna double check it. Oh, snap on guys here. Time to go get violated. <laughs> right, Mrs. Oh, mm. he's got a sign on it says it's consensual after this step, right on his first step when you walk on the truck. Oh, it's kind of comical. This way we give the lady a little printout. There's all their vehicle info on it. Let's you know about the battery, the charging system. Cranking normal, charging normal, loaded and unloaded. Only 186 millivolts of ripple. And there we are. We can staple that to our receipt. Let her know the alternator's good. Uh, let's go see if this resolved the issue with the battery light being on. Grab your donger when you're in here. This one, not your other one. Now we like this. Oh, turn that off. Brake light battery light and they are both now out fantastic and I guess that's it folks uh, other than the dilemma of whether or not to wear overalls they do look comfy let me tell you that and uh, well you guys are sitting here all comfy head on down to that comment section get comfortable down there with the keyboard leave the comments the questions the concerns the insty the Facebook and just remember viewers if I can do it you can do it Thanks for watching.